Good morning. For the service today, we're going to be following right two, and we'll begin by singing hymn 513. Please rise. (laughs) 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. Almighty God, our Maker and Redeemer, we poor sinners confess unto you that we are by nature sinful and unclean, and that we have sinned against you by thought, word, and deed. Therefore we flee for refuge to your infinite mercy, seeking and imploring your grace for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ. O most merciful God, you have given your only begotten Son to die for us. Have mercy upon us, and for his sake grant us remission of all our sins. And by your Holy Spirit, increase in us true knowledge of you and of your will, and true obedience to your word, to the end that by your grace we may come to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, has had mercy upon us and has given his only begotten Son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all our sins. To all who believe on his name, he gives power to become the children of God and has promised them his Holy Spirit. He who believes and is baptized shall be saved. Grant this unto us, O Lord. Amen. Out of the mouth of babies and infants, you have established strength because of your foes to still the avenger and the enemy. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O Lord, we beseech you to keep your household, the church, in continual godliness, that through your protection it may be free from all adversities and devoutly given to serve you in good works to the glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one true God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The Old Testament reading is from 1 Samuel chapter 17, beginning with the 32nd verse. David said to Saul, Let no man's heart fail because of him. Your servant will go and fight with this Philistine. And Saul said to David, You are not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for you are but a youth, and he has been a man of war from his youth. But David said to Saul, Your servant used to keep sheep for his father. And when there came a lion or a bear and took a lamb from the flock, I went after him and struck him and delivered it out of his mouth. And if he arose against me, I caught him by his beard and struck him and killed him. Your servant has struck down both lions and bears, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be like one of them for he has defied the armies of the living God. And David said, The Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said to David, Go, and the Lord be with you. Then Saul clothed David with his armor. He put a helmet of bronze on his head and clothed him with a coat of mail. And David strapped his sword over his armor. And he tried in vain to go, for he had not tested them. Then David said to Saul, I cannot go with these, for I have not tested them. So David put them off. Then he took his staff in his hand and chose five smooth stones from the brook and put them in his shepherd's pouch. His sling was in his hand, and he approached the Philistine. Here ends the Old Testament reading. We now sing Psalm 8. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babies and infants, you have established strength. Because of your foes, to still the avenger and the enemy. When I look at your heavens, the work of your hands, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is man that you are mindful of him, and the son of man that you care for him. You have made him a little lower than the heavenly beings and crowned him with glory and honor. You have given him dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet. All sheep and oxen, and also the beasts of the field, the birds of the heavens, and the fish of the sea, whatever passes along the paths of the seas. 
O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, forevermore. Amen. The Epistle reading is from Ephesians chapter 6, beginning with the 10th verse. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand firm. Stand, therefore, having fastened on the belt of truth, and having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and as shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. In all circumstances, take up the shield of faith, which, with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Here ends the epistle. Alleluia, alleluia, those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be moved but abides forever. Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Please rise. The Holy Gospel for this Sunday is from the seventh chapter of the Gospel according to St. Luke, beginning with the first verse. Glory be to you, O Lord. After he had finished all his sayings in the hearing of the people, he entered Capernaum. Now a centurion had a servant who was sick and at the point of death, who was highly valued by him. When the centurion heard about Jesus, he sent to him elders of the Jews asking him to come and heal his servant. And when they came to Jesus, they pleaded with him earnestly, saying, He is one worthy to have you do this for him, for he loves our nation, and he is the one who built us our synagogue. And Jesus went with them. When he was not far from the house, the centurion sent friends, saying to him, Lord, do not trouble yourself. For I am not worthy to, come, to have you come under my roof. Therefore, I did not presume to come to you, but say the word and let my servant be healed. For I too am a man set under authority, with soldiers unto me, under me. And I say to one, go, and he goes. And to another, come, and he comes. And to my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard these things, he marveled at him. And turning to the crowd that followed him said, I tell you, not even in Israel have I found such faith. And when those who had been sent returned to the house, they found the servant well. Here ends the reading of the Holy Gospel. Praise be to you, O Christ. You may be seated.
Dearly beloved, Christ our Lord says in the last chapter of Matthew, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And in the last chapter of Mark, our Lord promises, Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. And the Apostle Peter has written, Baptism now saves you. The Word of God also teaches that we are all conceived and born sinful and are under the power of the devil until Christ claims us as his own. Therefore, depart, you unclean spirit, and make room for the Holy Spirit in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Receive the sign of the Holy Cross upon your forehead and upon your heart to mark you as one redeemed by Christ the crucified. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, according to your strict judgment, you condemned the unbelieving world through the flood. Yet according to your great mercy, you preserved believing Noah and his family, eight souls in all. You drowned hard-hearted Pharaoh and all his host in the Red Sea. Yet you led your people Israel through the water on dry ground, foreshadowing this washing of holy baptism. Through the baptism in the Jordan of your beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, you sanctified and instituted all waters to be a blessed flood and a lavish washing away of sin. We pray that you would behold Dorothy according to your boundless mercy and bless her with true faith by the Holy Spirit that through the saving flood, all sin in her which has been inherited from Adam would be drowned and die. Grant that she may be kept safe and secure in the holy ark of the Christian church, serving your name at all times with a fervent spirit and a joyful hope, so that with all your believers in your promise, she would be declared worthy of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And hear also the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. They brought young children to Jesus, that he might touch them. But the disciples rebuked those who brought them. But when Jesus saw it, he was greatly distressed and said to them, Let the little children come to me, and do not forbid them, for as such is the kingdom of God. Assuredly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will by no means enter it. And he took them up in his arms, put his hands on them, and bless them. Dorothy, do you renounce the devil and all his works and all his ways? Yes. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth? Yes. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried? He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. Yes. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting? Yes. Do you wish to be baptized? Yes. Dorothy Jean Weber, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and the Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Peace be with you. Amen. We now sing hymn 246.
Grace, mercy, and peace are yours from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The text for our consideration, you have already heard, is from Luke chapter 7, beginning with the first verse. When I was in high school, I had a friend who called me when I was sitting down to watch a Sunday football game. And he says to me, Graham, I need your help to fix my truck. And I say, okay, sure, no big deal, I'll be there right away. He says, this is going to take a lot of time, might take a lot of effort, it might be tough. I'm not scared of that. So I go over, and sure enough, after a lot of effort, multiple hours of struggle to fighting all these years of rust on his F-150, we finally get the front struts of it off. And after all that effort, it had to be asked, was this worth the effort? Was it worth the trouble? For him, the answer was, yeah. He got to save hundreds of dollars compared to taking it to a shop. And for me, I got to the joy of learning a skill I've never used again, but still is kind of important. And I got to help out my friend as well. Today in our text, we see Jesus helping a man who by his own admission is not worthy of being helped. Hmm. But Jesus doesn't consider money or anything else when coming to help. Instead, in this account of Scripture, we see clearly that Jesus always troubles himself for the unworthy. The man asking Jesus for help is a centurion. A centurion would have been a Roman captain. He would have had about 100 men under his command. He would have been afforded a decent lifestyle. He would have been well-to-do. He would have been a big figure in the town of Capernaum. And today, he's ran into a situation that no military strength can solve. His servant is dying. And there's nothing he can do that seems to help. But he hears about Jesus coming to Capernaum and knows he doesn't waffle around with another option. He immediately sends for him. He knows that Jesus can solve this problem. So the centurion sends Jewish elders to talk to Jesus out of respect for him. But notice what the Jewish elders say about the centurion. I'll read it for you again. He, that is the centurion, is worthy to have you do this for him. For he loves our nation, and he is the one who built us our synagogue. This tells us two very interesting things. The first is the relationship that the centurion has with these Jewish elders. We just talked about the seriousness of the situation that's hap- happening right now. His servant is dying. It's a very grave situation. And he's not going to send random people to deal with a difficult and very timely situation. Instead, he knows these Jewish elders. He thinks they can get the job done. Talk to Jesus. Get him to come over. This reveals to us that he also loves the Jewish nation, as it says in our text. For a Roman, this would have been, at minimum, odd. This would have been very strange. In the, in the Roman system, there was a god for anything you could think of. A god of thunder, a god of rain, a god of fertility. For the Jews, the Jews didn't have multiple gods. They had one god. They had the true God. The God is revealed in the Old Testament scriptures. The God is revealed in the Holy Bible that you have in front of you. Indeed, from this we can determine that the centurion was a God-fearing Gentile. He had come to accept that the God of the Old Testament was the true God, was his God. And just like those Old Testament believers in Jesus' day, he was looking forward to the Messiah and looking for signs of him to come. The second thing that this speech tells us about the Jewish elders is how they view worthiness. How have they attributed the centurion being worthy? They base it on his actions. And to be fair, these actions that the centurion has done, they are remarkable. The fact that he loves the Jewish nation and he has built them a synagogue, that would have been a very expensive thing, even for a centurion. 
And by all outward standards of measurement, kind of looks like he has measured up. Kind of looks like he does earn a quid pro quo with Jesus. He helped us out. Jesus, help us. Jesus, help him in, as well. So the, centuri- the Jewish elders claim the centurion was worthy. But what about us? Have we earned the right to trouble Jesus? God certainly sees all of our actions. He knows how we have used his gifts of time and treasures and talents. He knows when we've used them for good purposes as well. Perhaps our prior service to him will let him look on us more favorably to allow us to be worthy in his sight. And surely if any request we're going to have for our neighbor is going to be answered by God, it's going to be one that we do out of selfless love, just like the centurion does. This isn't even for himself. This is for somebody else. And we haven't even considered our less noble requests when we ask for our will to be done above that of our Heavenly Father's. Indeed, when we base our requests to God on our own worthiness, on our own actions, we fail to understand who we really are. We are sinners. We have fallen short of the glory of God. We have fallen short of His expectations. We don't deserve a favor. All we really deserve is his wrath. Jesus goes with the Jewish elders to the centurion's house, but the centurion sends a remarkable response. He says, Lord, do not trouble yourself, for I am not worthy to have you come under my roof. Therefore, I did not presume to come to you, but say the word and let my servant be healed. Just as we did at the beginning of our service today, the centurion confesses that he isn't worthy of Jesus helping him. That he's done nothing but bad stuff. That he has fallen short of the glory of God. Despite all the things that the Jewish elders say, he knows that he isn't, his own actions don't warrant anything. But there is one person in this account who is worthy by his actions. That person is Jesus. Jesus never once sinned. He could legitimately look to his works and ask for whatever he wanted. But instead, he submits himself to the will of the Heavenly Father and submits himself to the misery of the cross. By his suffering, by his death, and by his resurrection, he bestows his own worthiness, his own perfection upon us who need it so desperately. By faith, the centurion realizes who Jesus is, that he is the Savior as promised in the Old Testament. He doesn't depend on his own actions. Instead, he goes strictly to Jesus for his compassion and love, knowing that Jesus won't look for his actions to justify himself. He looks strictly to Christ alone. And Jesus gives a remarkable response to this testament of faith. He says, I tell you, not even in Israel have I found such faith. The centurion's faith in Jesus and in God's word not only saved his very servant, but himself as well. The word of God that saved the centurion's servant is the same word of God that you have in your Bibles today. It's the same word of God that's preached in church. It's the same word of God that declares you worthy in holy baptism. God's word is sharper than any two-edged sword. It cuts through to the truth. It shows you both law and gospel. And when the water of regeneration was poured upon your head, along with the spoken word, the Holy Spirit enlivened faith within you. He gave you new birth, just as we just witnessed a few moments ago for Dorothy. Something that might seem simple, something that might seem plain to the unbelieving world has created life within a heart. When you read, listen, or ponder the word, your connection to your Savior is strengthened. 
The centurion told Jesus to simply say the word because he knew that God's word has power. It had the power to make the world. Certainly it has the power to save you as well. This is the same word that proclaims the Lord's body and blood as truly present in the Lord's Supper. It is the word that has given you faith and has declared you worthy of eternal life. And when this world attacks you, when it says, and when Satan comes at you and says, you are not worthy of what God has given you, you can agree. Yes, you're right, I'm not. But it's not my worthiness that matters. It's the worthiness that God has given to me through Jesus. That is where my worthiness comes from. That is where my perfection, my robe of righteousness comes from. The centurion was wiser than those Jewish elders at Capernaum that day because he knew who Jesus was. He knew he was the Savior that was promised. He knew that Christ would trouble himself even for a Gentile. My friend and I asked, is this worth the trouble with a yes? Me to help him out and him because he wanted to save some money. Jesus answered that question many times in his ministry, not just here. He answered it when he was being tempted by Satan in the wilderness, when he went 40 days and 40 nights without food or water. He said, yes, this is worth the trouble because you needed his righteousness. You needed his perfection. You needed his worthiness. He said yes when he was under trial in the Sanhedrin, when he stayed silent, because he knew what you needed most of all, his perfection. And of course, he said, is this worth the trouble when he was crucified? When nails were driven into him, he stayed on the cross, despite all the agony, despite the pain, because he knew that you needed his perfect sacrifice for yourself. Yes, you are worth the trouble. He has declared you worthy of eternal life. And you, just like the centurion, know who Jesus is. He is God himself sent down to declare to those who are unworthy that you are worthy of eternal life by his sacrifice. Indeed, we see this truly, that Christ always troubles himself for the unworthy. Amen. And now, may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, may it keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. We continue with the offertory. A clean heart.
Please rise. Let us pray for the church and for all people according to their needs. Faithful God, bring about your new creation through the proclamation of your Son, who has brought faith, healing, and resurrection to this fallen world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, defend your church against the schemes of the devil. Equip your church, and especially its pastors, with the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, that your creation may be recalled from futility back to its Creator. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator God, you ordered this world according to your good and gracious will, crowning your creation with man and woman. Give us faith to cherish the holy estate of marriage, its union of husband and wife, your call to be fruitful, and the promise that you will bless what you have made. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of justice, you establish earthly government and teach us to obey those who rule over us. Send your blessing upon all those who make administer and judge our laws, that your people may serve you in peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, teach us to trust his words of healing even before their fruit appears. Strengthen those who wait on you with patience to receive fulfillment of your promises and faith in your gracious will for them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, your son, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread and wine, the fruits of your creation, and made them his body and blood. Help us to receive these fruits of his new creation worthily for the healing of body and soul. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father of glory, your son is the resurrection and the life. We praise you for all who have died in his friendship, trusting in his promises. Bring us to share with them in the day without an evening in your heavenly kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things and whatever else you know that we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again and now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one true God, now and forever. Amen. We continue with the preface to Holy Communion. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is good and right so to do. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you. Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying,
Lord Jesus Christ, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen.
please rise. O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endures forever. Let us pray. O oh, God the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh. We thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. And we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one true God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. 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 You may be seated as we sing hymn 586.
morning again. Um, this coming Thursday at 9.30, we're going to be starting a new Bible study. We're going to be looking through the book of Judges. Judges is a book from which I am sure you know some of the content. For example, Samson is from Judges. But it's not usually a book that we just kind of page through. It is a book in which we find a lot of highs for God's people. We find a lot of lows. And we see God's patience and mercy acting pretty clearly the entire time for the history of God's people there. So if you can join us for that study, you're very welcome to. Um, I also want to say thank you to everyone who has been offering support for my family lately in the form of prayers and also the meals and the gift cards. It's been making our life a lot easier. So again, thank you. Um, lastly, if you are related to me, don't leave. We're going to do pictures. And given the average age of these front few pews, if we all leave, we're not all coming back. So if you are supposed to be in a picture, don't go. So until we meet again, may God bless and keep all of you.